you're a kid, museums bore you. Except dinosaur museums, those never bore you. I'm talking regular museums. Non-dinosaur museums. Not the kind of thing you're all that into when you're freaking six. Thing is, though, eventually you're not six anymore. Eventually you're 30 freaking six. I think it's a gradual thing. It's something you don't even notice. But one day you wake up, and all of a sudden, you realize everything you love is now old. And suddenly you can relate to museums. It's like walking through your attic. You know, here, here, over here, we have your first Atari, and your first NES Zapper, and your poster of Phoebe Cates that your first girlfriend made you take down. Look, point is, eventually you're old, and you lose as much interest in the now as the now loses interest in you. And you start to turn more and more to the old stuff, to your own personal museums, and also dinosaur museums. You, you never lose interest in dinosaurs. It's Namco Museum 3! You know, there's a lot you could say about these games that's already been said a million times over. I mean, there's not much left to say about Ms. Pac-Man. It's all been said. So to me, what's super interesting about playing these games now is how they feel in the now. They're just so, like, refreshing. You know, like all of today's, all of the now's DLC and, and hour-long updates and installations that go on and on forever. All that just washes away, you know? I, I mean, modern gaming... It's kind of like a desert sometimes. It's barren and hot and dry and vacant of joy and creativity. So to play this is just... Man, you know, you know how like right before a summer storm, the air gets that sweet smell? And, and like it's almost sticky, you can feel it. And the wind picks up, and the trees start to gently sway, and then, and then the screen spazzes out for a second, but then all of a sudden... <laughs> just pours. And that's all very poetic, all this talk about growing up and getting old and sweet summer storms. What about the games? Uh, well, I mean, I just described the feeling of playing them. Pretty vividly, I thought. Use your goddamn imagination, kids. See why See why I hang out in museums now? Anyway, uh, look, I mean, these are some of the all-time great video games. I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. Specifically, Ms. Pac-Man, and Dig Dug, and Galaxian. Those three games, I'm telling you, they, they play as great now as they did 30 years ago. Seriously, it's amazing. They control great. They look timeless, which is another interesting thing about playing them now. I mean, there are games released half as long ago that were considered these these huge graphical advancements that don't look as charming as Dig Dug, that don't have the color of Ms. Pac-Man. You know, the great thing about playing these three now is that they're still great. You know, it's not a nostalgia thing. It's not a legacy act. They're so well-made and well-designed. They really are timeless. But, of course, that's only half the package. There are three other games, too, because that's how math works. You get Pole Position 2, as well as two games I'd never played before. Fozon and the Tower of Draga. Draga, drug, or however you say it. But anyway, Pole Position 2 is, uh... Well, it's, it's Pole Position 2. It's tough to get a handle on its mechanics, and you're gonna crash most of the time. Until, that is, you remember, you can play Ms. Pac-Man. At which point, you just play Ms. Pac-Man. But after that... You have Fozon, which is actually kind of interesting, at least aesthetically and conceptually. It's like a puzzle game that's set beneath, like, some kind of super microscope or something. You, you control this little atom, and you have to create new atoms by attaching the correct electrons or what, whatever. Look, I don't know. All I know is it looks awesome. And it's a cool idea for a puzzle game, so Fozon at least had me intrigued. Only problem is... It's a lot more interesting and intriguing than it is fun, and it certainly won't interrupt your normal rotation of Ms. Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Galaxian. And you know, the only game in this collection I'd call outright bad is this one. Druaga, drug. It's this one. This thing kind of reminds me of Gauntlet, but without all the cool stuff in Gauntlet. You walk around a maze, you find the key, and then you get to the exit, which sounds fine, but holy crap, is it boring! 
And it's a little frustrating too. Your sword has like, like half a pixel of reach. Like you want to kill a bad guy? Better be on him, which is uncomfortable for both of us. Thanks, Draga. I'll just play Ms. Pac-Man. Don't have to be on top of her. She has morals! Anyway, a big thanks to our dear close personal friend Chris from Jersey City, New Jersey. He sends us all kind of crap, which is awesome. And something that's actually insanely cool of you guys to do. I don't know if we thank you enough for that. It's actually awesome, though, when he sends it when it's crap like this. I have become an old man. So I appreciate this museum in a big way. This thing's probably aged better than most of your original PlayStation games, and it's made from games that are twice as old. Boy, funny how that works. It's Namco Museum, Volume 3. Some of the best games ever. And Draga. 